So as you write your goals down, you're 48% more likely to achieve them, but you start to achieve these little goals, short-term, mid-term, long-term, easy, intermediate, advanced. If you could achieve the things that you wanted, being the person you are today, you would have already had it. So you can't. You can't achieve that level of success being the person that you are. If not, you'd already have that level of success. That's what I'm telling you. You're getting your subconscious mind to winning. And as you get your subconscious mind to believe that you constantly win, your identity starts to get shaped that you're a winner. You start to believe as people start to congratulate you. Jim Rohn, the late great Jim Rohn, rest in peace. He said, success is something you attract by the person you become. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Driven Not Given podcast, number one podcast in the world. Let's get into this, man. I'm gonna get into one of my favorite training topics. I, I train my team on this very often. I wanna shoot one for my podcast audience. I appreciate you guys. This is the self-confidence formula by Napoleon, Napoleon Hill, and it comes from the book, Think and Grow Rich. Well, I, if I'm not mistaken, Think and Grow Rich is number one or number two top so, most sold book next to the Bible, okay? Uh, for those of you that may not know, uh, what, what Napoleon Hill did is he went out and interviewed the 500 richest men in America in the early 1920s, I believe it is, and he came up with, nine, with 13 principles that they had in common to achieve massive wealth. Now, a little bit of a side story, uh, this particular book was actually watered down. It, uh, the, the story has it that Henry Ford went to him and he said, hey man, there's too much information that we don't want common folks to know about. You gotta water it down. You're giving them too much information, too much of the stuff, too much of the secret sauce, he said. So he got watered down once, it was still too much and it got watered down again, and then Think and Grow Rich was born. So anyways, but the self-confidence formula, many, many, very, very successful people. A lot of my friends, I've got, I've got a couple friends who are worth half a billion dollars that swear by the self-confidence formula. It's, I, I think anybody can agree. I think it's common sense to think that, hey, listen, building up your confidence is a very important asset to you as a business owner, right? To you as an entrepreneur, to you as a sales professional, whatever the case may be, in any part of your life, your self-confidence is extremely important. So with that being said, I'm going to break down the self-confidence formula by Napoleon Hill. So with that being said, let's get into it. So the first one that we got here is this, okay? Self-confidence formula. <clears throat> it says, I know that I have the ability to achieve the object of my definite purpose in life. Therefore, I demand of myself persistent, continuous action towards its attainment. And I here and now promise to render such action. Man, that's powerful. So let's go ahead and break that down a little bit, right? So I'm gonna look, I'm gonna look at what that one says, and I'm gonna break down a couple of them. And even when you read it, there's a couple of sections that are capitalized, right? So I know that I have the ability to achieve the object of my definite purpose in life, meaning the goal, the vision. What is it that you have written down on your goals? Keep keep one thing in mind. There, there was a study that was done that they said if you write down your goals, just by the simple act of writing down your goals, you are 48% more likely to achieve the goal because it's written down, just for the act of writing it down. There's a study that's been done on this. The good book, the Bible, talks about the importance of writing down your, 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 your goals as well. So he says, I know, know is such a key word, I know that I have the ability. Now here's the thing about know. The thing about the word know, even if you don't know, even if you doubt, you need to act as if. Act as if what? Act as if you know. Act as if you believe even if you don't believe. That is, let me tell you something. That is one of the keys. Because here's the thing. We have the conscious mind and we have the subconscious. The conscious mind is the one that'll fight you. That'll say, no, you don't. You don't know that. You don't believe that. You're not making that. You're not going to be that. It's like a bully. Your subconscious mind is like a gullible kid. It believes everything that you tell it, and it takes it for what it's worth, for what you tell it it's worth. 
the mind, and, and as a matter of fact, one of my all-time best audios, which I'll link it, I'll link a couple, I'll put a couple links here that'll be very beneficial for you. The strangest secret. The strangest secret, Earl Nightingale says, a couple of things that I like, but he says, a lot of things that I like, rather. He says that your mind is the most fertile ground. Imagine the most fertile ground anywhere. If you plant beautiful roses, it'll give you beautiful roses. If you plant poison ivy, it'll give you poison ivy. He says your mind is even more fertile than the most fertile land that you can imagine. So what you give it, the, the mind, the land of the mind is a subconscious. The subconscious believes everything you tell it. So when you say, I know that I am going to be fill in the blank, that I'm going to help this ministry, that I'm going to bless these orphans in this country, that I'm going to make a million dollars, that I'm going to help this, that I'm going to do that, that I am this, that I am a winner, that I am a millionaire, whatever the case is, that I'm a great father, that I provide my kids with the best life, that I put my, I, I'm so happy and grateful now that I put my son in that private Christian school, whatever your goals are. It says that you must know, know, and act as if. Because again, the conscious, the subconscious doesn't know the difference between a truth and a lie. It believes whatever you tell it. And here's the thing. The conscious mind is infinitely, infinitely, you could read this in Think and Grow Rich. You could read this in The Science of Getting Rich. You could read, you, you, you could listen to Earl Nightingale talk about this. It is infinitely more powerful than the conscious mind. Doesn't matter what the conscious mind says. Think about a patholog pathological liar. If you ever met a pathological liar, they lie so much that in the beginning they know it's a lie. Eventually they lie so much that they actually end up believing the lie. Well, you kind of got to become a liar in your mind towards the things that you want. I'm so happy and grateful now that I'm making a million dollars per month, passive income, and I'm donating over $100,000 per month. I'm so happy and grateful and feel the feelings. Okay, so let's keep breaking this down. So here's what he says. Therefore, I demand of myself persistent, continuous action towards his attainment. Therefore, I demand of myself. You've got to what? You've got to demand of yourself persistent and continuous action towards the attainment of what you already have written down, of what you already have written down and know that that is already, it's done. It's done. I just got to get to the place in the future where all of you guys see it. See, you don't see it right now, but see, it's already done in my mind. And think about this. Everything is created two times. It's first created in the mind and it's created in the physical. You see this mic here? This mic was first created in the designer's mind. Then they got to work. They sent it to whoever has to make it and it got made. The room that we are in, the device that you are watching this on was first created in somebody's mind. Then it was created in the physical because everything is created two times. First in the mind, then the physical. But here's a problem with what most people do. Most people, they create their reality that's not the one that they want in their mind first. Oh man, I don't know if I could be successful. I, I'm drowning in debt. I don't know how I'm going to do this. And they're just constantly feeding their stuff a bunch of negative things that ultimately ends up becoming their reality. They're constantly feeding their subconscious mind. I say this all the time. If your friends talk to you the way that you talk to yourself, unconsciously, for the most part, you wouldn't be friends anymore. That is absolute truth. So you've got to demand of yourself the persistent and continuous action to attain that definite purpose or that goal. And then that section ends by saying, and here and now, I promise to render such action. Here and now, I promise to render such action. So go out there and take the action. So the second section of this says this, I realize that the dominating thoughts of my mind will eventually reproduce themselves in outward physical action and gradually transform themselves into physical reality. Therefore, I will concentrate my thoughts for 30 minutes daily upon the task of thinking of the person I intend to become, thereby creating in my mind a clear mental picture of that person. Let's unpack this a little bit, okay? So I'm going to put this back on the screen so you can see it. Now I'm going to go word by word. There's a couple of words that I'm going to break down for you. I realize the dominating thoughts. Dominating thoughts. Let's, let, let's work on that. The dominating thoughts of your mind are eventually going to reproduce themselves into outward physical action. 
They're going to eventually, the dominating thoughts, what is it that you're thinking about? So let me ask you this question. Do you think that the people that you hang out with have an impact on your thoughts, on the way that you think, on the way that you feel, on the way that you view life? Yes. The things that you watch on TV. Are you watching a bunch of useless stuff on TV? Because let me tell you something. You are always, always feeding your subconscious mind. It's always getting fed. It's always getting fed, okay? So the dominating thoughts. So let's look at this again, okay? The dominating thoughts of my mind will eventually reproduce themselves in outward physical action and gradually transform themselves into physical reality. Therefore, this is a step that he's giving you to do. Therefore, I will concentrate my thoughts for 30 minutes daily, every single day, until it becomes a habit. You do this over and over and over. One of the things that we learn in martial arts, my eight-year-old son knows this. The mind forgets, the body remembers. The mind forgets, the body remembers, right? You do something like, like in kickboxing, boxing, jiu-jitsu, that's what we train. We do drills. We say drillers are killers. Drillers are killers, meaning you drill so much that the mind forgets, the body remembers. Somebody throws a jab, you parry it, you hit them with a hook. You didn't even have to think about it. Your body just did it. Why? Because you've done it over and over. So here it's telling you to concentrate your thoughts for 30 minutes daily. Look at it. Let's look at this. I will concentrate my thoughts for 30 minutes daily upon the task of thinking of the person I intend to become, thereby creating in my mind a clear mental picture of the person that you must become. Jim Rohn, the late great Jim Rohn, rest in peace, he said, Success is something you attract by the person you become. The self-confidence formula is telling you to dedicate 30 minutes daily and to picture. Remember, we think in pictures. And to picture that person that you intend to become. So ask yourself this question and even write it down, right? The person that you intend to become, that successful version of you. Imagine there's a parallel universe. You're in this one and there's a parallel universe where that version of you already exists and that person is successful. Maybe he's a millionaire. Maybe he drives a Ferrari. Maybe he, he you know, travels the world, helps orphanages, whatever the case may be. How does that person act? How do they feel? How do they dress? Are they in shape? Do they eat healthy? At what time do they wake up? Do they take cold showers? What kind of car do they drive? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What is that person? Because let, let me give you a newsflash. If you could achieve the things that you wanted, <clears throat> being the person that you are today, you would have already had it. I'm going to say that again. If you could achieve the things that you wanted, being the person you are today, you would have already had them. So you can't. You can't achieve that level of success being the person that you are. If not, you'd already have that level of success. That's what I'm telling you. So you've got to picture, right, and I keep putting it on the screen because you need to read it. I, I, it's on the screen because you need to read it, okay? I will concentrate my thoughts for 30 minutes daily upon the task of thinking of the person I intend to become, thereby creating in my mind a clear mental picture of that person. Have a clear mental picture of that person. As kids, we used to daydream, right? Kids used to daydream. You need a daydream now, Okay? Daydream of that person. Think of that person. Concentrate your thoughts for 30 minutes daily. So let's go to the next one. I know that through the principle of auto-suggestion, any desire that I persistently hold in my mind will eventually seek, seek expression through some practical means of attaining the object back of it. Therefore, I will devote 10 minutes daily to demanding of myself the development of self-confidence. So... Let's look at the beginning and the end. In the beginning, it says, I know that through the principle of auto-suggestion, any desire that I persistently hold in my mind will eventually seek expression through auto-suggestion. What does that mean? That you are saying it over and over, that you are suggesting it over and over. I am so happy and grateful now that I am fill in the blank. Act as if it already happened. Get excited as if it already happened. And you could do that. It may, it may be tough for you but you could do it with practice. Practice, practice, practice. Now let's look at the end of this particular part. 
It says here, I will devote 10 minutes daily to demanding of myself the development of self-confidence. You've got to demand of yourself the development of self-confidence. One of my mentors, Jane Nolan, talks about conquering self. This is where you conquer yourself. Most people, they will go through their entire life and they'll never conquer themselves. That's why they're lazy. That's why they procrastinate. That's why they don't demand of themselves success. That's why they're complacent where they are with a bunch of broken promises to their kids and their family because they were never willing to pay the price. Well, guess what? They probably never listened to stuff like this. Instead of listening to stuff like this, they stopped the video early, right? They went out there Netflix and chill. Ne maybe not this video, maybe not this channel. Shit, go, go to another channel that better suits you but that helps you grow, right? This isn't for everybody. And probably the reason why this isn't for everybody is because I ask you, make sure you like and comment this video. I'm giving you some value here. The price of admission is subscribe, like, and comment, and share it with a couple of folks. Is that too much to ask for? I'm asking you, JC to you, is that too much to ask for? Can you do that? I'm asking for the sale. Go ahead and like it, comment it, subscribe, share it with a couple of folks. Let's get into the next one. Okay, so now let's get into the fourth one. I have clearly written down a description of my definite chief aim in life. And I will never stop trying until I, shall, until I have developed sufficient self-confidence for its attainment. So, I have clearly written down a description. That means that it's got to be written down. I always teach people, listen, you want to have short-term, mid-term, and long-term goals. Here's why. If you have just a long-term goal, let's say you want to make a million bucks. Usually that takes time, right? If you don't have, because you've got to kind of trick your mind a little bit, right? Let's say you got a goal to, and you, you, you put a goal to hit a certain position in your company or get a watch or upgrade your car, whatever. You write these down. Here's what you're, you're telling your subconscious mind. You're getting your subconscious mind to winning. And as you get your subconscious mind to believe that you constantly win, your identity starts to get shaped that you're a winner. You start to believe as people start to congratulate you. As you put it out there, hey man, honor before, I'm so happy now that I got my new watch. I'm so happy now that I got, that I upgraded my car to this. I'm so happy now that I got this. Maybe it's a suit, a certain tie. You write it down and then guess what? You're checking off, crossing off, boom. You got the goals and you're crossing them off, crossing them off, crossing them off. Now you start to believe I am an achiever. I get things done. I'm, I am a go hitter, right? Now you start to develop confidence because if you start to win, don't you develop confidence? I'll give you an example. My son does jujitsu, right? And he competed in the second tournament. And I said, he did great. It was a big tournament. There was like 14 kids in his division, got their place, right? Came up a little bit short on the last fight, but nevertheless, did great. So there's a couple tournaments coming up. And I said, this tournament has a ton of people. This other tournament has less people. Obviously, if you compete in a tournament where there's less people in your division, you have a higher likelihood of winning, right? So I said, we're going to go to the one with less people. We're going to pick that one instead of the other one. Why? Because if, and the next one, let's say he gets third place in the big one, but he gets first place in this one, what happens to his confidence? Goes up. His identity starts to get shaped a little bit. Starts to get shaped a little bit. Starts to get shaped a little bit. Because it could be the same person that shows up to that other tournament, same skill set, but the mindset is different. He's going to do significantly better than what the mindset being bad. So as you write your goals down, you're 48% more likely to achieve them, but you start to achieve these little goals. Short-term, mid-term, long-term. Easy, intermediate, advanced. You start to trick your subconscious mind that guess what? You are a winner. You start to get your mind used to you winning. You start to get people around you used to, but more importantly, you, your mind to believe that guess what? You are a winner. Now let's get into the fifth one. Now the fifth one is probably my favorite one and it's very long. So I'm going to break this one down into two. Okay. So let's get into the fifth one. I fully realize that no wealth or position can long endure unless built upon truth and justice. Therefore, I will engage in no transaction which does not benefit all whom it affects. I will succeed by attracting to myself the forces I wish to use and the cooperation of other people. I will induce others to serve me because of my willingness to serve others. So let's stop there. Let's unpack that a little bit, right? 
So let's go back and let's look at it. I fully realize that no wealth or position can long endure unless built upon truth and justice. Therefore, I will engage in no transaction that does not benefit all whom it affects. Okay? That applies to me when I read that again, because re I read this many years ago and I read it often. And I train on this on my trainings. I, have, I do trainings on Mondays, sometimes on Tuesdays. Uh, for my sales organization, we have a t uh, you know, over 100 people every time. And here's what happens. We often talk about in our industry, being the solar industry, it's a triple win. Usually a win-win is good, and it is. But a win-win-win is even better. I sell the customer solar, and this is what I tell my team. You guys have to understand this. So imagine I'm talking to my team. What other business do you have that is a triple win, that is a win-win-win? Sometimes it's just one win. The salesperson wins. If the salesperson and the customer wins, that's, that, that's a win-win, which is great. And most businesses aren't necessarily a win-win. But we have a triple win. I sell the customer solar. They save a bunch of money, add the value to their home, get a 26% federal tax credit. Every year that passes, they save more money than the year prior. The customer's winning. We get paid a commission, so we win. Who else wins? What else wins? The planet wins. We are making a positive impact on the environment. Every house that we help go solar, we're making a positive impact on the environment. My friends, that's called a triple win. So we're getting into this. He says that I will engage in no transaction that doesn't benefit both parties, that doesn't benefit all who it involves. Is that a good way of thinking? Yes. Now, if you know that you're doing business in that manner, isn't your confidence going to go up? Yes. I've got people that ask me, JC, why should I do business with you and not with the other guys? I say, oh, number one, you have me. I very often I tell my customers, if it doesn't make sense for them, sometimes some of my customers are surprised. They say, you know what, this just solar doesn't really make sense for you for these reasons. Boom, 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 boom. And it's a true story. And then the customer will say to me, Wow, I'm surprised you said that because I met with two other guys and they were adamant about selling me that it would make sense to me. I said, no, it wouldn't make sense to you. I don't put commissions first, right? But we, that's just how we're trained. We're going to train to be honest. Those are my best referral partners. Some of those customers that I told them no because it wouldn't benefit them end up being so grateful that they end up referring me to people that it does make sense for. Does that make sense? So I will engage in no such transaction that doesn't benefit all who it involves. So let's get into the second part of the fifth one. I will eliminate hatred, envy, jealousy, selfishness, and cynicism by developing love for all humanity. Because I know that a negative attitude towards others can never bring me success. I will cause others to believe in me because of my belief in them and in myself. Isn't that beautiful? I'm going to believe in them and I'm going to get rid of all of these things of hatred, jealousy, envy, cynicism. Right now, here's the thing. When you read this on a daily basis, which is what we're going to recommend, and that is what this recommends, it starts to go into the subconscious mind and it starts to create your identity. As I've mentioned a few times, I realize that. Okay. But eventually it's something that it's just a part of your identity. It's just something that you don't have to think about. And it's just the way that you conduct business. And trust me when I tell you, your confidence can be built up. The cool thing about confidence is that you can build the confidence. You start off by faking like you have the confidence. You act as if, eventually you will not have to act as if. So to finish off, let's read the last part. The last part says this. I will sign my name to this formula, commit, to it, commit it to memory, and repeat it out loud once a day with full faith that it will gradually influence my thoughts and actions so that I will become a self-reliant and successful friend. And then it has a section in the bottom where you sign it, okay? With full faith that it is shaping the person that you are. This information here, along with other confidence formula, along with hanging out with people that are confident, along with hanging out with people that believed in me, that were confident that I would be successful, then their, I borrowed their confidence. And then I started getting more confident. Then I started listening. And here's one of the things about personal development. Saying confidence is a form of personal development. It's kind of like, imagine a rim of a car. And it's got different spokes, right? The rim's got different spokes. 
That rim of the car, you may listen to something today that doesn't make sense to you, doesn't click, but you keep on your, your personal development journey. You keep on your personal development journey. Then you hear something later on that makes what you heard over here, maybe a month ago, six months ago, a year ago, make sense. Now it starts to click. Now it starts to click. That's why Jim Rohn says, success is something you attract by the person you become. Some things are not gonna click for you right away. They're just gonna go over your head. But if you continue on this personal development journey, the books you read, the people you hang out with, the people you listen to, the podcasts that you listen to, the podcasts that you're subscribed, that you're liking and commenting, all of that stuff starts to shape your identity into that person that you have to first become in order to become successful. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the Driven Not Given podcast on the self-confidence formula. You guys can go ahead and download it, okay? And uh, make sure that you print it out, sign it, read it aloud every day, and follow the instructions on it. There's a couple of instructions on it, okay? Follow it on a daily basis, and I want you guys to leave your comments. Maybe you're watching it now, maybe you're gonna come back in the future, six months from now, a year from now, and tell me how it impacted you, if it has already impacted you because you read this in the past, I want you to write in the comments, how has that impacted you? With that being said, JC Rangel, I will see you guys at the top of From the Top. Take care.